Have you ever had a favorite fighter? Can you please tell him that I love him very much? Maybe like a Bilal Muhammad, for example. I don't know why your favorite would be Bilal Muhammad, but let's just say hypothetically it was. Bilal Muhammad is absolute trash. And it has you sitting there wondering, man, why can't he just get that title shot he deserves? I mean, he's doing everything right. He's getting wins, getting no contests, going through life-altering wars with striking specialists like Damian Meyer, even willing to walk around at events dressed like this. And this man with two wins in four years is still getting a title shot over him. Can you believe it? I mean, I can believe it too, but still. And that's why today we're talking about fighters that deserved better. And Bilal Muhammad. Blood ring told Bella Muhammad to move so he could get a pick with the belt. Come on, and don't do him like this. Surely not. Oh, he's actually... Come on, he don't deserve all that. Like, I'm not a fan. Granted, but... He don't deserve to get violated like this. Like, he ain't a bad guy. It's just kind of annoying. Oh, Tony. Tony. Oh. How are you going to have a longer win streak than the champions and not get a title shot? How are you going to win an interim title, not lose? And fight for another interim title. Make it make sense, please. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. Oh, come on. Who edited this? I mean, when we're talking about fighters that deserved better. I don't give a fuck about Bilal Muhammad. This man right here is the definition of this shit. It's not even like the UFC was against him. Destiny was against them. I'm talking fights getting cancelled due to tripping over cables, to pandemics, and of course to, you know, Khabib pulling out a few times, but, you know, what are you going to do? So if the UFC can't get this man safely to a title fight, and they're going to cook up this shit cringe belt, where was Tony's BMF belt? He is the BMF. BMF, uh, Mount Rushmore. And if you disagree, then you just, you know, you had to be there. It was... Oh, it was magical. Now man's pushing 40 on one of the longest lost streaks, telling us he's only just hitting his prime. I feel at this point in time in my life that I'm just barely hitting my prime. Stop the crap. <laughs> While losing to guys cosplaying as a gimp. Hairline just looking more like Vegeta's every fight and just generally looking like an old man trying to impersonate Tony Ferguson out there. <sighs> But as a random bum on my ass making this YouTube video, do I really have the right to tell this man when he should retire? Yes, please retire. We, we can't take it no more. Now this one may not hit as much as the Tony one, and that's probably because Reyes fans only became Reyes fans for like two weeks, two rounds into the Jones fight. Like, don't lie, we all, we all did it. But regardless of that, this is still one of the most underserved downfalls I've ever seen. And that's because this man ain't even get his moment. You know what I mean? Like, that's just sad. He didn't even get his moment. He didn't even get to have the belt. Undefeated, taking on the goat of the sport. <coughs> that tested positive <coughs> multiple times. Beat him and still lose. How does anyone do this? But hey, it's not the end of the world because Jones went off to pack on muscle for three years. <laughs> Leaving Reyes to get another title shot against Yan. So, this shouldn't be too bad for her. I ain't ever seen a decision this bad and impactful that it actually cracked this man's chin. You know how bad your judging has to be to do that kind of shit? And what does the UFC reward him for this wild journey? Well... A seat at the John Jones loser reunion table. But on the bright side, thanks to all my research for this video, I've come to the conclusion that I have found a new MMA curse. That being, if you are on a 12 fight win streak and you have a Fujita hairline, you will never win again. Um, kind of sucks, but that's just, that it's the curse. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, I get it. Not everyone likes Paulo Costa. He doesn't make it to all his fights. And you know, on the odd occasion, he might miss weight by 20 pounds. Oh, no, never miss weight. But... No man deserves to get assaulted in the cage. Like, I'm sure there's better candidates than Ben Askren, but... Damn. Like, I don't think you're going to find a high-profile UFC career that went any worse start to finish. 
Besides your CM Punk, of course, but that's his thing. He's like a legend at that. Like, can we really blame Ben for going head first into Askren's balls when he's throwing a flying knee? It's not like he could have gone left or right or anything. Having one of the worst striking matches with Damian Maia getting mean to no end, but I mean, we're... We're not all Bilal Mohamed. What do you expect from a top 10 welterweight? And worst of all, pushing Jake Paul into beating all these MMA legends. And we lost Mighty Mouse because of you. You know what? I changed my mind. F*** you. Actually, sorry. I take that back. That wasn't very nice. But you got to give it to him. He deserved a lot better than what he got because this man came out of retirement just for the UFC, even though he was already known as one of the best ever do outside the UFC. Even though, like, that, at least that's what we hear. Like, do we really watch one in Bellator? You know what I mean? Uh, you know. And what does he get for all of this? Just becomes an absolute joke. But that's mostly because of the Jake Paul thing, really. If he just left that alone, he probably would have been fine. But yeah, that really ruined things. Ask you! Oh, they can't even get his name right anymore.